All right, welcome back. Um, on the screen here, I've got a couple of different strategies that most investors will either prescribe to. There's really no other type of strategies. It's either a short-term investment strategy or it's a long-term investment strategy. Now, when we talk about short-term investment strategies, and I'm going to go on record here as saying that to me, I'm not a big fan of short-term investment strategies because I really don't personally subscribe to this fix and flip as a investment, all right? To me, the short-term investment strategy that most of you guys are going to hear is called the fix and flip strategy. Or, hey, I'm flippers, or I'm a rehabber, or whatever. Typically, I personally, now that doesn't mean I don't have investors that do this or had investors, I don't subscribe to this strategy because to me, the fix and flip strategy is one that is here and gone. And I'll explain that here in just a minute. So typically, short-term strategies are people that want to fix and flip, and they typically hold the property anywhere from two or three months to as long as 12 months, depending on how much rehab it takes, all right? It is great pay compared to the amount of work they put in. Now, if you ask <laughs> some of these guys, they're like, I work really hard. Well, I get that, but I mean, you're not digging ditches and whatever. There's nothing wrong with digging ditches, but it's very hard work. Um, the advantage to the short-term strategy is it's good pay, you know, $20,000, $30,000. The disadvantage, and I have put my own uh, disadvantage spin onto this, is that it's not truly in, in investing. I call it flipping burgers. And listen to me as I see you squirm in your seats. When you go work at a McDonald's, and you get paid to flip burgers. That money that you receive is considered capital. That capital you then spend. I got to pay my car payment. I pay my rent. And I eventually will run out of capital. So I have to go back to work tomorrow and flip more burgers. This is why I personally don't subscribe to this strategy. Yes, you can make good money, but at some point, that money that you make is capital. At some point, you run out of capital. I don't care. Play the strategy out in your head. Pick a number. Make a hundred grand. You still are going to eventually run out of money because you've got, oh, I got to pay my rent, got to pay my car payment wife wants to go on vacation, I've blown through a hundred grand. Now, depending on who you are, maybe you blew through a hundred grand in a month. Maybe it's a year. Maybe it's two years. Point is, it doesn't matter. You eventually will be out and have to go back and flip another house. So that's why to me, it's really not an investment. It's just a really cool job that pays really well. Okay, now contrast that with the long-term strategy. Typically long-term strategy, they call the buy and hold strategy. Becoming a landlord. Now with this buy and hold strategy, there is property management issues, there's landlord issues, there's tenant issues, so there are some other skills that can be involved in this strategy. Now, doesn't necessarily because maybe their strategy is to offload the management portion to you. Can you say opportunity? So if your client is a buy and hold strategy, and really doesn't want the hands-on day-to-day activity, you actually now have a second opportunity to take that deal that you've helped your investor with, 
that they want to hold for the long term, typically more than one year, and now move that over into a property management company and you would be the property manager so you can actually gain money here twice. You've got the uh, buy and the manage. Now, let me go back. I didn't mention this as an advantage in short term. Obviously, if they're fixing and flipping, you, you could potentially have two sides on that as well because you're going to help them buy and hopefully when they're ready to sell, you help them sell. So there are two sides of income potentially possible for you in either one of these strategies. But the buy and hold to me is more of an investment because what you are creating is now cash flow. And there's an old adage that people say, and I'm sure you guys have all heard it, that cash is king, right? That's actually slightly right. Let me give you a better example. Cash flow is king. Cash flow is king because if you're uh, fixing and flipping and you run out of capital, you have to go back to work, make more capital. If you do buy and hold strategies, and let's say you've done that five times, and now you've got, pick a number, $3,000 a month cash flow every month, you actually can now go sit on the beach and do nothing and still be making cash flow every month. So typically, I love the buy and hold strategy. Yes, you become a landlord. Yes, all of those things are true with the landlord. And let's face it, one of the best landlords that are in the world, in my opinion, was Donald Trump. Now, I don't care about your politics or anything like that. That's a whole different person. Literally, all Donald Trump was, was a glorified landlord. All right, really high-end properties made a lot of money. It's possible to make a lot of money with the buy and hold. So one of the advantages Typically, they are higher pr priced properties because they don't necessarily need as much work. There can still be some rehab in this strategy. The disadvantage is the buy and hold strategy. You never regain your capital back. So you have to have access to a lot of capital where the fix and flip start with 10 grand, sell it for 20 grand. Now you've made 10 grand. You can use that into go to another property and you got capital back to buy another property. And in theory, you're recycling your money. You can do deal upon deal upon deal. Long term, you put money into it. It is actually an asset that you maintain. So now you've got to get new capital somewhere else to do the next buy and hold. So that's one of the downsides to that buy and hold is there's probably they do a lot, lot, lot less deals or they're going to have to have a way better access to capital somewhere to actually buy those properties with. All right. So what is your role as an agent? As an agent, um, you don't need to be a pro investor. You don't need to know everything but you do want to become investor friendly and understand the fundamentals of both fix and flip and buy and hold. All right. So at their core, investors usually concentrate on two areas. One that most investors have a niche. All right. There are going to be single family investors or there are going to be land. I'm not saying it's not possible that they could do both. I'm just saying typically they have a niche. They also typically have a strategy, meaning most buy and hold guys love to buy and hold. Most fix and flip guys love to fix and flip. Because of the skill set that differs between the two, sometimes you will see fix and flip guys not want to be buy and hold because they don't want to be the landlord. Still an opportunity for you. Now, here's the part where it starts getting confusing. Everything I've just told you in the last 10 minutes is wrong.
Because what you're going to figure find out is that there are investors that will do both strategies. They will also maybe manage and you won't have that second part. So it's up to you to understand when you're dealing with your specific investor, what strategy they like, what niche area they like, things of that nature. And part of your job might be to talk them out of an investment, especially if they're single family home guys and all of a sudden they find a class B office building that's for sale. You may have to sit down and at least explain to them, dude, this is a different animal. You know, we're going to be dealing with rental rates per square foot. We're going to be dealing with long-term leases. We're going to be dealing with probably a company's attorney, not just the owner of the property. So it's not that they can't, but you need to be aware of all the strategies so that you can at least be helpful to them when they say, oh, well, I saw this land that was specifically for sale and I think I can make money on it. Go find the listing. All right, but you understand we have other issues. What's the access to the land? What's the zoning to the land? What's the front foot exposure on the main property? Well, it's at a really good price. Well, yeah, but it may not have, it may not be on a hard corner. And if you don't know what hard corner is, that's exactly the point I'm getting at. Hard corner is a corner that has a stoplight at it. A lot of commercial investors love hard corners because it's easier to sell gas stations to that corner when somebody has to stop, look at the gas station and think, oh, I need gas, as opposed to a corner that they just blow through and go, oh, shoot, I, I needed gas and pull in somewhere else. So that is a, uh, an issue with some commercial people. Point I'm trying to get at is different ball game. Just keep, be aware that if your investor is a single family buy and hold, he may not be the best rehabber. So if he says, oh, I can fix and flip that. Really, do you have access to plumbers and electricians? Now I do, and I can help you. And once again, we go back to adding value. So just be aware that everything we talked about with niches and strategies can be mix and match. And I know that I didn't really give you any help in this chapter at all because everything I told you, I see a couple of you are like, well, hell, he just changed the story. Yeah, I did. Um, because that's the beauty of our business. Every client's going to be different. All right. So we're going to come back here in a couple minutes and talk some more stuff. Um, if there's any questions, you guys feel free to give me, uh, ask me here. If you're at home listening, uh, Raymond at realuniversity.com. Send me a question and I'll do uh, the best I can. All right. Hold on.